encouragement from Calvary Assembly of God in Coleskill, New York. If this is your first time catching us, my name is Pastor Ray Richards. I'm the pastor at Calvary Assembly. And this is my wife. I'm Giselle. So uh, we're going to see people coming on. And as they do uh, come on, we'll be able to say hi to them. Uh, but uh, we're glad that you're with us tonight. Okay, this past Sunday, we had a few technical issues at first with the live stream, but now they have been all worked out and we're good to go for next Sunday and the future after that. Uh, because of the glitches, though, unfortunately, we were unable to get a video, video recording of the service, so many folks missed your sermon. Um, I did have it on audio, and that is up on the website for those who want to listen to it there, but would you, honey, give a give those listening a brief overview of the main points of that message from Sunday? Sure. Before I do that, though, I just want to welcome Letty. Uh, she says hi. We say hi back to you. Hello. And Angela in June. Hi. <laughs> Dominga. Mia. Sorry. And uh, we're glad. Uh, that's life. We have to. Okay. Oh, we have to be flexible like rubber bands. Right, yeah. right, Letty. Yeah. As long as we don't snap, right, Letty? As long Letty? as we don't snap, which... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyhow, on Sunday, the message was entitled um, Coronavirus Cancellations. Uh, one of the things that we're going through, and, and this is true no matter what challenge you face, uh, this one just happens to be bigger than any one that we've faced before uh, in our lifetime. I just need to adjust this here real quick. I want to say hi to Dawn. Not... Uh, Dawn, glad okay. you're on there as well. Um, but when we go through a tough time, and as I was saying, we've never been through like the, this in our lifetime, but there's a temptation to become absorbed with what we've lost, yes. uh, the trouble, the trial. And I find that the more we do that, the bigger the trial gets and the smaller our God gets. And so what I want to do on Sunday is I wanted to encourage the church and encourage those who are watching the live stream mm -hmm. to look at what not has been restricted, what has not been canceled, what has not been suspended, mm -hmm. what's not been declared non-essential, and instead look at what we still have, what God yes. has provided for us. And so uh, I want to look at those. There were four things I looked at. And before I do that, I see that uh, Brittany is on board and Nancy as well. Uh, glad that you guys are watching us. Uh, and Dawn, we already said hi to her, but yep. we'll say hi. And, She's uh, my birthday buddy. I had a birthday last week and Dawn had one the day after. So happy birthday, Dawn. Okay. So, so. Uh, you can tell we're a little informal here, Yeah. Uh, but we're just glad to be able to connect with you. We miss you. Uh, we we very miss much everybody. miss you. It's one of those things we've lost because during this time of transition, we're experiencing restrictions. We're not able to get together uh, for in-person services. We have to do everything virtually. We have to practice mm -hmm. social distancing and masks, et cetera. And so one of the points I made on Sunday that we haven't missed or lost is the ability to draw near to God. And uh, by the scripture says in uh, James chapter four, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. And so one of the points I made is that even though we may not be able to get together in person, um, God hasn't put restrictions like that. There's no social distancing with God. There's no uh, masks that we have to wear with God. We can be Amen. real That's with God. That's the whole point. Take off your masks yep. before God. So that we can draw near. Um, and so that was one point I made. Oh, hey, want to greet uh, Michael Lent. Michael Glad Lent. you're here. And yes, Sheila. Joanne. Joanne, Joanne. Lent. Yep. Yeah. Glad that you all are here. Give a shout out to all of you for who, uh, who are joining us tonight. Um, second thing we looked at is that sometimes, you know, we look around and we're seeing uh, what appears to be a of rights. I know I was just reading an article earlier today. Uh, where the governor of Kentucky uh, mm -hmm. was allowing people to park in cars at Home Depot and go in and out at Home Depot, but wouldn't allow churches to meet in their cars and do a an, uh, uh, service, the drive-in service. So now the attorney general's involved, the attorney general of Kentucky, trying to come back to our rights. But no matter what happens down here, the second point I made is God's reign has uh, never been suspended and never will be. It can't be. Uh, there's no wisdom. No insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. The Lord reigns. And so that was the second point. Oh, we're singing point. that Sunday. We have the Lord reigns and we have drawn near for Sunday. So it really all ties in to what we're worshiping with and what we're coming up with here for encouraging you all. Cool. Looks so, like Kimberly just popped on. Hey, Kimberly. Kimberly. Glad to see you as well. <laughs> uh, third thing we looked at is during this coronavirus time, there have been numerous cancellations. On the way over tonight, as I was driving, I flipped on the radio and I heard mm -hmm. that the uh, the baseball induction ceremony, they're going to postpone that. They're not going to hold it this year. 
they're going to wait a year. And they're looking at even maybe the state fair of trying to figure out what they're going to do with that. So we're experiencing one cancellation after the other. And so one point that I wanted to make that would encourage people is that the return of Christ has not been canceled. The return of Christ has not been postponed. It will come on time when the Father says it's going to happen. So there was another word of encouragement. Another thing that's not canceled is when he says this virus is done. It's done. It's done. Yeah, God is faithful to his promises. They've never been canceled. I want to say hello to uh, Sammy as also to Brenda. Glad Brenda. that you all chose as well. Um, and then the last thing we looked at uh, this past Sunday was there are a number of businesses that have been considered non-essential. I know in Michigan, they were talking about not even being able to buy seeds. Um, right. If I could, oh, thanks. Yes, My that. wife's blessing me with a drink of water. <laughs> they should be given a blessing and a reward for that, for sure. <laughs> but uh, they wouldn't even let them buy seeds. They were saying it's not essential. Crazy. Um, oh, I see the Kimberly, not only is she watching, it hey, looks like... Kimberly, uh, Caden, and Kieran. Kieran. So, all the K's over there. We'll say hi to her, them, too. Kurt just left. He's <clears> on his way home. Yeah, so we'll he say hi to you all, too. Out we should practice to get over here. It's been a busy day. Yeah. So, so what's not considered non-essential, though, from the biblical perspective, is the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, it's easy to fall into a trap of complaining mm -hmm. and whining and murmuring yeah. about what we've lost, what we don't have. But what a great opportunity we have to cultivate our spiritual gardens through Christ, mm -hmm. to allow the fruit of the Spirit of love and joy and peace and patience and all the rest to grow in our lives. So those are the four main points, that the presence of God is not restricted, that the reign of God is not suspended, that the return of Christ is not canceled, and the fruit of the Spirit will never be considered non-essential. And you kind of gave some of those points how they can work out practically in our lives, like by not complaining, which I know I'm guilty of. <laughs> um, but uh, honestly, just for me, when like today's been a really busy day and just just like practicing the presence of God is just so necessary during these times. And um, there's a book, I think there's a book by that title, Practicing the Presence of God. And um, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, um, just to take that pause and just to say, Lord, I just breathe in your presence because mm -hmm. we need to do that. How else do you see these points working out practically in people's lives during the outbreak? Sure. Here? Well, the point you made about a pause, I preached a message a few years ago called the divine pause. Mm. And the point is, is that we can find ourselves getting spinning inside like a, a, a hamster in a wheel. We, we get anxious, we get nervous, we start running around. And the divine pause is when we just, we stop and we remember, you know, that second point about the reign of God is not suspended. Right. God's in charge. And, and we have to remember that because sometimes we feel maybe governmental leaders are in charge or maybe the pandemic, the virus is in charge, mm. uh, business people. Are in, no, right. God is in charge. And as I was thinking about these points as I was driving over today, when you think about it, the reign of God gives us faith that God's in charge. Mm -hmm. The return of Christ gives us hope and the fruit of the spirit is love. There's mm -hmm. faith, hope and love. But in terms of some of the practical, practicing the presence of God and resting in his presence, you know, one of the things that we find uh, when daily routines are up, upended, like they have been with the pandemic, is we let some of the important things go. We say, well, we'll get to him, we'll get to him. But when I look at scripture, Daniel, for example, here was a guy who three times a day, he prayed. It didn't matter what day it was, it didn't matter if it was a good day, didn't matter if it was a bad day, mm -hmm. he prayed. And even when the edict came that he wasn't allowed to pray, he still went to pray. Cost him the lion's den, but he still stayed faithful. Nothing changed that routine of, I'm going to spend time with God. Right. And then I think of Jesus as he's doing his ministry. The crowds are all around him. Everybody is, is wanting his attention. And what does he do? Luke 5, 16, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Nothing mattered more than that time with the Father. And if it was important enough for Jesus to spend time with the Father, important enough for Daniel to spend those times, we have the time. And as I mentioned Sunday, the distractions are gone. It's not as if we can go to a ball game or uh, watch a sporting event or go to the mall, walk around, go to the movie. We have time to develop the routine of prayer, of drawing near. Mm -hmm. I mentioned we are as close to, to God today as the choices we made yesterday. Mm -hmm. And if we want something different for tomorrow, we make different choices today. Now, in terms of yeah. God's reign, 
uh, I think when we start feeling the triggering inside, we read something in the news about it, and we go, wait a minute. <sighs> Be still and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. He reigns. And the return of Christ, we can live with hope and anticipation. I mentioned Sunday that um, the Apostle Paul said that while we're waiting for this blessed hope, we learn to say no to ungodliness and yes to righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, and then last of all, the fruit of the Spirit. What an opportunity. You know, when everybody is is panicking and freaking out for God to develop within his, his people, Christians, the fruit of the Spirit. If the people of God will walk this out in faith and hope and love and draw near to Christ during this time, we will stand out in a world that's in some ways going crazy. We'll stand out with a message of hope. Yes, so. amen. Oh, looks like Thanks. Sid and Patty joined us yeah. as well. Glad okay. to have you uh, with us as well. Okay. So for those listening, if you have any comments or questions, like right now would be a good time if you want to just type them in. Um, any prayer requests you want us to lift up, let us know. Um, and we are having communion this Sunday, just to let you guys know that's your announcement. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna. This is the second time we've done this with virtual communion. Virtual communion. Um, which means that whatever you have in your home for something to drink or and to bread, to you eat, know, crackers, whatever. Yeah, we're gonna ask you to have that ready. Uh, we were able to get all the bugs out of the live stream now, so we're That's not going to have that bunny come back up again. That big we're, we're bunny. We're hoping the bunny doesn't come back. <laughs> I actually um... saw him for the first time on Sunday. <laughs> He's a big bunny, but uh, no, we want we want Jesus to be seen, not the big bunny. Um, but we're going to ask you to have bread and something to drink, uh, crackers, something to drink, and then we will celebrate communion together, even though we're separated by miles and in some ways, in some places, separated by states. Right. We're still going to be able together. Join with us in communion. Yeah, to yeah, celebrate definitely. communion. I'm just checking to see here. I'm, I'm, you know, I can give you a Bible verse, but I'm still making my way around tech stuff. So. Yeah, we're trying to scroll down. Just to see who might have sent us. Hey, there Allison. Hi. Allison. Glad to welcome you as well. You are welcome. Yes, we're glad to encourage you guys. And uh, Allison said, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So. Uh, but I'm not seeing uh, any good. We just didn't know if there was a question you had about any of the points that I made uh, on Sunday that I just reviewed for you today. Uh, I just yeah. want to give you a chance to ask those and we'll take those or any comments um, just to encourage your heart you know, again. I had said last week about if they have something they want to share. You yeah. Know, if they had a testimony or something short. Sure. I don't know. So. Um, also, just want to let you know, Sunday morning, I'm going to be preaching a somewhat unique message. It's uh, coming up. It's entitled Coronavirus Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like people are drawn to conspiracies like moth to light. Um, but I want to take a look at what might be a more dangerous conspiracy that is at work. And uh, obviously, we're going to connect it to the scripture and then help provide some practical application for the church on how we walk this out as followers of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, also, a couple of things I want to make you aware of that we're looking at for the following week, and then we're going to close with a, a word of prayer. We're trying to get these to be about 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm a talker. And hopefully with my wife. I'm a talker too. Though. I know, you're I, better. Last you're... week I was quite chatty. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're better at keeping me on target. But anyhow, what we're going to do next week, we're, we're, we're going to see if we can pull this off. We want to try to do, if we can get the tech people here and work it out, we want to try to do a live stream prayer service on Thursday night at 6.30. Thursday night the 7th, May yep. 7th. Uh, I can't believe it's already May already. I'm just like, wow, yeah. this is just... Well, the reason we so want to fast. do it is next Thursday is the day of prayer, National Day of Prayer. Hi, Susie. Hi. We're doing good. Good to see you. Yep. Yeah. But <laughs> you. Uh, th Thursday night at 630 to 730, one hour live stream. We're going to do it as a harp and bowl if it works out. So we'll intersperse worship and scripture reading and prayers. And we're going to ask you for that one hour in your homes to set aside that time. And we're going to kind of lead you in prayer and then give you time to pray that particular area in your home, and then we'll have some more worship, scripture reading, and prayer. But it's an opportunity for believers all across the nation to come together mm -hmm. for the National Day of Prayer. And then the following Sunday, Lord willing, we're assuming we're still going to be on uh, the shutdown. What we'd like to do is have for Mother's Day, if you would, between now and then, mm -hmm. send in a lesson that your mother taught you. Just a, it doesn't have to be, please don't turn into a novel, 
but just some lesson that your mother taught you for, Sunday for, the, for the Sunday, Sunday Mother's Day. Mother's Day. 10th? I don't have a calendar tenth. in front. I think it's the yeah. Monday the 10th. Yeah, Sunday. Uh, <laughs> hey. Hi, Tina. What do you mean? No, not you, Ray. You got me. Oh, the talker. I got you. Okay. <laughs> Matt Hass. I, was That's Michigan. Like, I think Michigan. Yeah. yeah hey, Matt. Matt. Glad to have nice you join us you. as well. Um, but I know for, okay. <laughs> see, okay. Yes. Mother's Day. I just went through the calculations. It is Mon Sunday, May 10th is Mother's Day. And so um, a, yeah. little, a little line or something, if you want to email it to me, you can do that at secretary at cagcobleskill.org. Um, Something your mom taught you. Yeah, lesson from your mom. I want to work it into. Hopefully, lesson. mine will tell yeah. that I taught them how to clean. <laughs> they taught you how to clean. Oh, That's no, funny. I don't know. So, but we, but we we do want to we do want to make that a very personal, special service to honor the moms. We may not be able to do it in person, but that doesn't mean we can't make it special for the moms among us. And so, we're going to actually share those with the uh, the live stream audience to let people know, hey, how much we appreciate. This is a lesson that my mom taught us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 716, uh, we wanted to try to keep this to 15 to 20 minutes. I have one little short announcement to oh, make. Please. I just wanted to let you guys know that the worship team is brainstorming uh, how to do or to do a worship session that we're going to hopefully record and then get out there like an hour long of worship songs. Would you like something like that? I know there's a lot of worship teams doing it, but if you just give me a heart or something, if you'd like our team to do, it won't be a concert, but it'll be a, a worship session because we can't call it a concert via other rules. But anyway, we're looking at doing that probably for the following week, um, depending on how long the shutdown goes, just to bring you some encouragement during the week. So yeah. let us know if you're interested in that too. Okay. Yeah, we're so, seeing some thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, because we're going to do the day of prayer next Thursday, we yeah. will not be meeting doing the Facebook live. We're going to instead do the Thursday and we'll intersperse there. So mm -hmm. if you come here next Wednesday at seven, we won't be here. We'll put uh, an announcement it'll be out, Thursday so. instead at, at 630. So on that note, I'm going to close in prayer. We're so glad that you joined us again for another Wednesday word of encouragement. Um, this yeah. is uh, a blessing and a privilege for us to be able to connect with you. And I'm so thankful that my wife and I get to do this together. Uh, we miss you. I said it at the start. I say it now. We really miss the body of Christ. Uh, when God calls a pastor, he gives that person a pastor's heart. And so when you can't be with the people, it is, it is very difficult. Um, but know that you are loved. Know that you are cared for. Mm -hmm. Know that you are prayed for. Uh, and we can't wait till we can gather together again. Yes. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you. Uh, we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. And the world right now is scared. The world right now is angry. Uh, the world right now is depressed. But Lord, thank you that as followers of Jesus Christ, we have the privilege of knowing that your reign has not been suspended so that we can have faith, to trust that the, the world is not out of control and that it is working towards your divine purposes and ends. Thank you for so many people that have been able to hear the gospel over the air that they would never have come through a, a church door. Lord, we thank you and bless you that even though events around us in this natural world are being canceled, there's been no cancellation notice of the return of Christ, nor will there be. Jesus is coming again. And what a blessing when he comes. We thank you that he will reign and rule. We thank you that death has been defeated, but we thank you that, uh, that there'll be no more weeping, no more sorrow, no more pandemic, no more coronavirus. There'll be righteousness and life. And Lord, I thank you that during this time, we can enjoy the cultivating of the fruit of the spirit in our lives so that we stand out. Uh, not as whiners and, and uh, wimps and warriors, uh, but instead as those who wait on the Lord and thank you as those who worship the Lord and thank you, Lord, that we can draw near, that there is no uh, social distancing guideline that has been established. There's no mask that we have to wear. We can be real and authentic because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. He made a way, Father, for us to come back home, the prodigal to be restored. Thank you. And we pray for everyone that's watching this now and will watch us during the week, that you would encourage them by your spirit, that you would bless them even now that we got connected virtually, that there would be just a little bit of hope, a little bit of faith, a little bit of love in their hearts, 
more than they had when they started, that this was a word of encouragement for them this week. Mm -hmm. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thanks, folks. God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday with the live stream at 10 a.m. And, and then, then next Thursday, Thursday at 6.30 yeah. for the day of prayer. God bless. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye.